Okay, Cal kids, I'm a little bit behind, I'm sorry. Um, for today, I just want to talk about a couple different things. Um, I want to, I didn't really have any questions from you folks. So it's kind of, oh, I had, I had one. Uh, Blake asked a, a series of good, very good questions. I appreciate that. Um, I am going to show you the answers on 29. 29 was a challenge, and honestly, um, this involved a strategy that I've never had to use before. Um, I'm going to give you a little hint. I'm not going to quite tell you the um, the answer yet, but um, but I will give you a hint and see if we can work our way towards it. And today I'm going to keep it kind of short because I've got something I got to go do here real quick. So 29, what we've got is this situation like this, where this is 12 meters, 12 meters high, okay? Not feet, meters, okay? Where we've got this pole that is also 12 meters, and then we've got this rope, okay? So I'm just gonna call that R, okay? And we want to know what the vertical rate of change is and the horizontal rate of change. So we want to know dy dx, or dy dt, sorry, and we want to know dx dt, okay? Well, Blake and I kind of bounced around some ideas on this, and I think this is kind of the best way we've came up with. We can go ahead and call this the, um, Let's go ahead and cut this into two, and let's call this angle theta, okay? So then we can go ahead and write an equation relating theta and 12, okay? I'm gonna let you guys handle that one. So then after you've got this, you can, well, what the heck, I'll write it, okay? We got sine of theta is r over two over 12, okay? So sine of theta, is r over 24. Okay, let me go ahead and zoom out here. Okay, so then um, we've got this angle down here. Um, this angle down here is obviously going to be 90 minus 2 theta. So then we've got sine of 90 minus 2 theta equals. Um, y over 12. But then you can see that solving for this is going to be inverse sine, and then we have to plug that in. Oh, this is getting uglier than ugly than ugly, okay? So here's what I'm going to recommend. Find dh dt, or d theta dt. Find that. What does that equal? Okay? And then use that d theta dt in this equation after you differentiate that. Okay? Try that, and then we'll see if we can come up with the right answers. Okay? Um, of course, you're gonna have to write another equation for, for x, okay? But like I said, find d theta dt at that point in time. Okay? Um, And that's even going to involve a challenge because they say when y is 6, well, when y is 6, we can find this angle, and then we can find that angle, and then we're going to have to plug that angle in, and then you're going to have to go ahead and... Um, find out what r is, what this length is at that time, and then plug that all in. Okay, so you can do it. It's just going to be a little bit of a challenge. That's okay. That's okay, okay. Um, but let, let's let's leave that there, and we'll see if we can um, if we can get it from there, okay. Um, I have misplaced what I gave you the other day. Gosh dang it! Hold on. I can't find it, so I don't know where in the heck that went. 
Okay, mental note, work on organization, which I think I am getting better at with this. Okay, so let's work on those, okay? Um, and like I did show you the answers, but I wonder if I showed you enough answers. Okay, I gotta get down to the shop here real quick. Um, got somebody coming to buy a table saw, because we're getting a new one. Um, here's the other answers from 304. couple review problems here from this book um, okay um, let's see how 33 goes no 35 the drawing for 35 is right here. Okay. And the problem for 35 is right here. I think this is a little bit different setup than we had before, but I'm trying to make sure we've got enough practice with this. Okay. Yes, because this one's walking away from the light bulb. Okay. Let's go ahead and start setting up um, 41 to see if this, um, let's see if we can get this one set up. Just, just, what I'd like you to do is just try and set this up. Don't, um, don't worry about getting it all done necessarily, but um, that I think is, is, um, is an interesting problem. Hmm, interesting. Okay. And I'll tell you the answer for 41. I don't know if I showed you that answer. So let me just go ahead and give that to you real quick. And then I'm going to be this negative 97.96 meters per second. Okay. Okay. And... See if we can find one more. There's a problem that I would like to do 13 and 14. Okay, what are we at? Eight minutes? 14. I'm going to do 14 today. Okay. It says find the rate of change of the distance between the origin and the point on the graph if that rate of change is two centimeters per second. And then I'm gonna have you do 13, so you can jot 13 down right now or screenshot that, okay? So let me do 14. This, I think, is a problem you very well might see later on in your life. Okay, so I'm gonna smoke through this like nobody's business. Um, 14, find the rate of change of distance between the point, between the origin and a point on this graph, y equals square root of x. Okay? Okay. And it says dx dt is 2 centimeters per second. And I want to find, let's call this distance d. I want to find dd dt. Okay, let's go and zoom out. Okay. Okay. So this equation is y equals square root of x. We want to find an expression that relates x and my distance. 
and the distance is dependent upon the value of x. So what we have here is, let's just say, that this, let's call this x, y for now. Okay? If I call that x, y, well then my distance between 0, 0, and that is obviously x squared plus y squared, the square root of that. If this point was anything other than 0, 0, it would be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared, you know. If it was like, say, 1, it would be x minus 1 squared, okay? So this distance is d. But I think you can agree that um, this is going to be a little bit ugly. So what we can do is actually we can go d squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And that's what we're going to differentiate after we go ahead and... I'm wondering, do we have to? Let's go ahead and, um, and substitute square root of x for y. How come? Because we want an equation that relates x and d. And I can make that substitution because y is the square root of x. And I can differentiate. Because um, I have dx dt, but I don't have a value of x. embarrassing. I thought that I would be able to do all this work and have dx dt kind of lead to what my dy dt was. Well, let's go back up here. I'm just going to kind of brainstorm here. If I said d is equal to the square root of x squared plus x, then d, 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 t, I wouldn't need to know d, 1 half x squared plus x, raise the negative 1 half times 2x dx dt plus dx dt. But then I still have x that I need to plug in. 2's would cancel. So I'd have x over the square root of x squared plus x. No, I can't. Hmm. It's not going to work either. Let me punt on that. We'll come back to it. So for tonight, finish 29. Look back at any problems you had. Um, I've done problems like 14 before. It's not going to work either. We'll come back to it. Okay. So tackle that, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.